Hi, Isabella. Hello from Manta. Uh, from Thank Nigeria, you. I think. I'm from Tanzania. Tanzania, sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, so, good morning, good afternoon, colleagues, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen. Yeah. And you will talk to us around child marriage as a form of human trafficking in Tanzania through a human rights perspective. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, good afternoon, good morning again, colleagues. Uh, so uh, this afternoon, uh, I will be making a presentation on child marriage as a form of human trafficking in Tanzania from uh, this research has been done from a human rights perspective. So the roadmap of my presentation will be as follows. I will briefly introduce my research. I will also go through the methodology uh, that has been used for this research. And then I will give a brief overview of the legal framework on child marriage uh, at the international level, continental level, but my focus will really be on uh, the domestic Tanzanian level. And thereafter, I will go through the findings uh, of the research. And the findings of the research have been grouped into two. Uh, the first part will focus on the nexus uh, between child marriage and human trafficking in Tanzania. And then uh, the second part will focus on the challenges for the elimination of child marriage in Tanzania. And thereafter, I will quickly go through uh, the recommendations, uh, which are a result of uh, this research. So as for introduction, the definition of child marriage which has been used uh, for this research is that child marriage is any marriage uh, which is carried out uh, where uh, parties to that marriage are below the age of 18 years. And also as a matter of introduction, uh, the researcher understands that child marriage happens for both boys and girls, however, uh, due to the fact that statistics show that uh, child marriage is more predomin predominantly affects more girls than boys. So some of the statistics show that the ratio is actually 80-20. So as a result of that, uh, this research particularly focused on uh, child marriage for girls. And the main research question of this research was whether child marriage is a form of human trafficking in Tanzania, and as I've stated, this research was explored from a human rights perspective. And uh, what inspired this research is the fact that Tanzania has one of the highest prevalence rates of child marriage in the world. However, the correlation between child marriage and human trafficking is not very well documented. Uh, the main research question uh, for this uh, research was whether child marriage is a form of human trafficking in Tanzania. And the research question was uh, inspired by the fact that uh, the correlation between child marriage and human trafficking in the first place is not very well documented, but also uh, there is lack of empirical evidence to support the nexus between child marriage and human trafficking. So this research aimed to gem generate empirical evidence to show that there is a correlation, if any, between child marriage and human trafficking. And the focus for this particular research was Tanzania. So the, the methodology that was used. So in the first place, uh, the research design that was used is convergent parallel mixed methods research design. And this research design uh, entailed collection of both qualitative and quantitative data, but then the data was analyzed separately. And at the end of the day, uh, it involved comparing uh, after the analysis of the data, what was um, uh, there is uh, the findings of the qualitative data and also the findings of the quantitative data to see whether they complement or uh, 
contradict each other. And since the focus of the research was uh, empirical research, empirical data was collected through interviews, focus group discussions, questionnaire survey, and of course, there was documentary review that was also done. Uh, key informants of the research included uh, officials from local government, uh, uh, from the local government of the study areas. Uh, it included lawyers, it included social welfare officers, it included uh, officials from non-governmental organizations, and it also included uh, community development officers. Uh, focus group discussions were five, uh, and these were one group was for girls, uh, one group was for boys, uh, another group was for mothers, another group was for fathers, and also community leaders, which involved uh, leaders from local government, but also uh, traditional leaders and other personalities that are considered to give leadership within their communities. Uh, questionnaire survey was done in form of house household survey, where in each study region, 20 households were selected to respond to a questionnaire that was designed for this research. In total, empirical research had 350 participants. Uh, the regions that were involved in Tanzania were five, and the regions were selected purposively based on predominant rates of child marriage. So uh, the regions that were involved were known as, uh, were called Shinyanga, Tabora, Mara, Dodoma, and Lindi. And as I said, 350 participants were involved in empirical research and also ethical aspects were considered throughout the design and also carrying out the research considering the fact that uh, children were also involved as participants and respondents in this research. So that briefly is the methodology that was used. Uh, so there is a legal framework on child marriage. I will not uh, go through it uh, in detail, but a few things that I want to highlight when you talk about the legal framework on child marriage. The first aspect that I want to highlight is Isabella, that- Isabella, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I see that the slides are not changing again. There is a legal framework. I will not go into details regarding uh, the legal framework, but I want to highlight a few things. The first thing I want to highlight is the fact that according to the international as well as the continental uh, regional frameworks, child marriage is defined to be any marriage where parties to that marriage are below the age of 18 with no exceptions. At some point, uh, the committee that monitors the CRC, the, uh, the Committee on the Rights of the Child, as well as the CEDO committee, gave uh, a general uh, comment uh, to state that exceptions may be allowed under circumstances where you have a special uh, permission to marry uh, from the judiciary. So judiciary based on special circumstances may decide to lower that age to 16. However, this position was revised in 2019 to remove the exceptions. So at the moment, there are no exceptions to child marriage at the international level. At the continental level, the minimum age for marriage has always been 18. That has not, uh, that with no uh, exceptions, and that has not been able to change. Uh, but uh, for Tanzania, I'm also not able to move to the next slide. But for Tanzania, particularly, uh, the legal framework on child marriage is slightly uh, different because uh, the law in Tanzania allows girls of 15 years to be married as opposed to boys, uh, whereby it, uh, the law states that in order for a boy to be married, they have to be 18 years old. So there is a difference 
regarding uh, the law in Tanzania. However, apart from the Law of Marriage Act, which provides that a girl of 15 can get married, there is an Education Act, which is also applicable in this situation because the Education Act provides that if you marry a student that is in primary or secondary school or impregnate a student in primary or secondary school, then uh, you get, uh, it's illegal in the first place, and then you get a punishment of 30 years in prison. Uh, so the Law of Marriage Act in Tanzania has been challenged through public interest litigation in the case of Rebecca Gumi versus Attorney General. And the decision was very positive that the Law of Marriage Act is unconstitutional, unconstitutional by declaring that a girl of 15 years can get married. Uh, and uh, the judiciary ordered the government to amend the law to reflect that 18 years should be the minimum age for marriage for both boys and girls. This decision was given in 2016. The government appealed this decision and the highest court in the country confirmed the decision of the high court to state that the government should amend the law to reflect that only girls of 18 years and above should get married. However, uh, this amendment has not been done. The government has not amended the law. So the law remains as it, as it is, the Law of Marriage Act, that a girl of 15 years can get married. However, due to the education, uh, to the uh, enforceability of the Education Act, it means that only girls that are not within the formal education system can get married. So if a girl is in formal primary and secondary school, uh, then you, they cannot get married. So the Law of Marriage Act is now applicable to girls who are not within the formal education system. So now the findings as to the nexus between child marriage and human trafficking. Uh, the definition of trafficking in persons that was used for this research is the definition that is provided for under Article 3 of the, the UN Protocol to Prevent, Suppress, and Punish Trafficking in Persons, especially women and children, which among other things defines uh, trafficking in persons to mean recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of threats or use of force or other forms of coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power, uh, or of position of vulnerability, or of giving or receiving payments or benefits to achieve consent of the person having control of another person and for the purpose of exploitation. So according to this definition, Trafficking in persons has three elements, which are the actual act, the, uh, the second element is the means, and finally, uh, the purpose of why it is done. So this research wanted to relate whether child marriage in Tanzania using empirical data fulfills these three elements of tra trafficking in persons. And the findings were as follows. So in the first place, uh, the research established that the act of trafficking in persons is also happening when it comes to child marriage. Uh, and this is done in terms of relocation. So when a child is, uh, is married uh, in Tanzania, most of the times it, uh, it results into this child being relocated from the home that the child was living to the home of the husband. And uh, trafficking in persons involved relocation of uh, this child, even if that relocation is within the same village, the same district, the same uh, region, it doesn't particularly require the relocation of this child over a border. So even relocation within the same village amounts to traffic. So uh, this research show, uh, 
78.57% of the participants of this research confirmed that uh, when child marriage uh, occurs, it involves relocation of this child to the home of the husband. And most of the times it involves relocation of this child to the parent's home of the, uh, of the husband. And- yeah, Just about to know the couple of minutes. Okay. And another aspect that was uh, seen was uh, from this research is the fact that sometimes relocation is done uh, to escape the consequences of the Education Act. So if the child that is being married is a student, then the, uh, the, the, the child would be relocated, either to be married completely in, the, in a different village from the one she's uh, residing in, in order to make sure that they escape the consequences of the Education Act because you cannot marry a student. Uh, so uh, another finding of this research is the means that are used to procure child marriage, which also uh, align with the means for, uh, for procuring trafficking in persons. So for example, uh, most child marriage, this research showed that most ch child marriages are secured by coercion of these girl children. And coercion, uh, and sometimes even physical assault and verbal abuse is used to force this child to agree to the marriage, even when this person does not want to. For example, there is a participant that shared a story that there was a girl that was being forced to get married and she didn't want to. So as a result, the parents used uh, coercion, physical assault, verbal abuse, and it resulted into the girl committing suicide. Another means that is done to secure child marriages is exchange of cash, goods, and livestock in form of bride price. So this is also aligns with the elements of uh, trafficking in persons. So 92.86 of participants confirmed that the practice of bride price accompanies child marriage. Another way that child marriages are being secured is through abduction whereby this research showed that uh, there are some uh, regions, for example, Shinyanga, which was a study region in this research, showed that they have a practice known as kupula, whereby if a man is interested in marrying a girl, the only thing that they have to do is abduct this girl and take her to their home. And when the parents realize that the girl has been adopt, uh, abducted, they will, figure, they will find out who has abducted their girl. But the aim is not to rescue the child, but rather to do negotiations for bride price and to officiate that lady. So that also uh, aligns with the elements of trafficking. And finally, uh, another nexus between child marriage and trafficking is established by the purpose of uh, child marriages, whereby this research showed that uh, child marriages expose, exposes girls to risk of exploitation and also abuse. So this research showed that 63.64 of uh, participants confirmed that uh, domestic and sexual violence uh, occur a lot in marriages where children, girl children are married. And also this research showed that most girls when married and they're taken to the husband's home or to the homes of the parents of the husband, they're expected to provide labor. And age actually is a motivation towards marrying someone that is very young because then the span of this girl being able to work becomes uh, larger. So this research confirmed that the, the uh, child marriages, the way that they're done in Tanzania really uh, fulfill all the elements of uh, human trafficking. But the research also showed that there are efforts that are being uh, implemented to, to eliminate child marriage, but there are challenges. And the challenges include, in the first place, different perceptions of who a child is. At the community level, not everybody agrees that any girl who is below the age of 18 years is a child. They all have their own ways of defining who a child is. And at most, 
uh, age is irrelevant. So some define it using puberty, some define it if a child is actually in school, some define it based on a number of criteria and age is not one of them. So another challenge is patriarchy, traditions and customs, poverty, which attract um, the bride price payment phenomenon and also the loopholes in the legal framework as identified. And finally, uh, this study came up with a number of recommendations. In the first place is to reconcile the child protection laws. As I've said, there are a number of laws in Tanzania that talk about child protection and child marriage, but they are contradictory. You have the Education Act, which says something different. You have the Law of Marriage Act, which says something different. And you have uh, the Law of the Child Act, which is silent regarding the issue of minimum age for marriage. And uh, uh, another thing that is recommended is to awareness creation on the nexus between child marriage and human trafficking. Why is this important? During this research, uh, there is a theme that came out from a number of officials in the government that said that most of the officials, they don't really favor child marriage. However, from looking at the way they've been acting, for example, appealing a decision that raised the minimum age of marriage, you would think that the government is in support of child marriage. But they said that trouble that they're having now is because the Law of uh, Marriage Act was enacted uh, using people's opinions. So they cannot just amend the law without having to go back to the communities and the community, some of the communities are not ready. So now what they do is to find a way around to make sure that they address child marriage without having to go to communities and the communities perceiving that they are now imposing international legal frameworks on them. So they're finding alternatives. For example, the Education Act is one of that, those methods. So it was important to do this research to show that this nexus between child marriage and human trafficking gives another avenue for protection of children, especially those that are not in formal, uh, in formal schools, especially considering that Tanzania has very good laws on human trafficking, which more or less mirror or reflects what is provided for at the international level and also at the continental level. Another aspect that is being recommended is empowering of children themselves. Isabella, so that, is... <laughs> okay, so empowering of children, provision of safe houses, proper enforcement of uh, child uh, forced labor and human trafficking laws, and finally, translation of human rights, especially to address the issue of different uh, perceptions of who a child is. Thank you very much, Samantha. Thanks a lot, Isabella, and uh, sorry for rushing you, but in fact, uh, your, your, your presentation also attracted a number of questions, and I'd like to have time for that. Uh, Lorraine kind me, kindly uh, told me that we had a bit more time to go into the, uh, the break, uh, break time, if that's all right. Um, and um, if there is any question that somebody wants to ask uh, orally, or I can go on straight with... Uh, with the written uh, questions. I can start with that and if somebody wants to raise their hands um, in time. Uh, so I have, a, I have no, a number of questions in the, in the Q&A and the first one was, what, what about child labor? You, you kind of answered that, but you might want to make a further point on that. The question is about what, what about child labor uh, as part of, uh, of early marriage? Uh, it, has it got any explicit relationship to human trafficking? Uh, okay, uh, yes, uh, I kind of, kind of alluded this a little bit in my presentation to say that um, child labor in the first place is uh, associated with human trafficking in the sense that if one of the purposes of human trafficking is to exploit especially children uh, in terms of forced uh, labor, then that's that amount to child trafficking. But also there is an association between the two 
with child marriage in the sense that one of the main factors driving child marriage is also provision of forced labor. So for example, uh, in this research, uh, I came across uh, a child that used to be married. She was married when she was 13 years old. And she was married as a third wife to a man that was 45 years old. And she was sent to live with the family of the man in another region. And when she was married, one of the things that they really expected her to do was to work in the farms and also to uh, assist in rearing of livestock in one of the regions which predominantly, the predominantly farmers and um, livestock keepers. So she was really uh, uh, supposed to provide a lot of labor and, and it was something because she was only 13, it was something that she could not actually fulfill according to their expectations. So as a result, they used to expose her to a lot of beatings uh, and that was also coupled with the other factors because she was not getting pregnant. So she was getting beatings from everyone, the husband, the family of the husband, and ultimately she just decided to run away. And she, ran, she walked from one region to another region. It was a lot of kilometers. So I would say that there is really a relationship between uh, child labor, human trafficking, and also child marriage. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, another question, do you know of any case that have been brought against the law of marriage acts after Re uh, Rebecca Gumi uh, versus Attorney General case? Uh, so for Tanzania, there isn't any other case. Uh, the people that brought, so now I see that they've decided to change the strategy. Rather than using the judiciary, they've decided to now lobby the government and also members of parliament to make sure that the law is amended. So I can see a change of strategy uh, from the judiciary to a lobbying the government and especially members of parliament who are responsible for uh, passing of laws uh, so that the law can be amended. Okay, uh, we, we lost a part of what you were saying because uh, the um, they cut. I mean, the, the connection was lost at some point. Um, mm -hmm. so maybe you want to, to look at the Q&A afterwards and then answer the question in more detail. Um, a question I, I think that would uh, would very well link uh, what Al-Hassan and, uh, and yourself, Isabella, has presented. Is this child marriage legitimate or is it a social norm in that yeah. part of the country? So, sorry, can you please repeat that? Is child marriage legitimate or a social norm in that particular in uh, in Tanzania? Uh, so I, I think uh, child marriage is a social norm, but it is a social norm that is fueled by multiple uh, factors. So in the sense that depending on where you are in Tanzania, because then also that uh, changes the dynamics. You have places where uh, child marriage in itself is a social norm, whereby uh, children are expected to get married at a particular age. If a child is not married at, a, at this particular age, the family is considered to be cursed, etc. However, uh, this social norm is also being fueled by other factors. For example, Poverty, which is a major factor that is uh, driving uh, child marriage, because uh, in some places in Tanzania, the wealth that you can get by marrying a child is massive. So if parents are doing very badly, uh, if the social economic conditions are also very bad in a place, then the rate of child marriage goes higher. Okay, uh, Al Hassan, is it something that you could comment on as well? Not necessarily to in relation to Tanzania, but it'd be interesting to understand, you know, the relationship between uh, the two. Um, between child marriage and social norm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's about um, the justification of it. So what we've seen in this from our data so far is that 
the education that we've conducted, I mean, previous research has informed a lot of education on some of these issues, and there has been some sort of improvement in how we conceptualize some of these problems. We can say that there are social norms, but there are community specific. There are communities within the same jurisdiction where social child marriage is considered as a norm because they don't consider the age as a factor. So that's the problem. So we have to look at the complexity of the situation. In some of these communities, they might not consider the age, but they might be considering some of their own way of characterizing a child who is ready for marriage. And that's the situation in some communities I know in Ghana. So it's about the rights that they perform to show that this child has considered, is considered as what, ready for marriage. And when these norm, uh, um, um, rules or informal rules are institutionalized within the community, then child marriage becomes a norm. But when you are tackling the idea of child marriage from their sense, they don't see it as wrong because they see that they have their own way of a criteria of defining who is ready for marriage and who is not. And in some communities, we do practice some rights, that cultural rights that shows that this child is at an adult stage and he or she can marry. But within the legal order, that child may be considered still a child. So these practices and makes child labor, uh, sorry, child marriage a norm. And there are situations the community specific. Thank you. Well, thanks for already, I mean, bringing the discussion together, Al-Hassan and, uh, uh, and Naomi. And I, I can see that um, uh, uh, Naomi and, and Pamela have to leave or have yes, already I'm, left. I, I'm so sorry. We have, we have to leave. We can't stay any longer. Um, but thank you so much yeah. for the, this opportunity. Well, thanks a lot to you. And uh, really interesting to get this global framework, global perspective to start with. And uh, I hope people who were uh, attending get note of what research is needed uh, uh, to fill the gaps that you've highlighted. And they obviously uh, very rich in terms of uh, um, ideas as to what geographical areas are, are missing, although they Absolutely. might be <laughs> languages. Thank but, um, thanks a lot, Naomi and Pamela. And looking forward to the report, obviously, I'm sure it, is, it will be shared. Um, so uh, if I can carry on with some question, maybe for, for, for Isabella. Um, this question by um, really by somebody who hasn't put their name, uh, which asks whether it's easier to consider child marriage as sexual exploitation or as a form uh, of human trafficking, and what would be the difference? Uh, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, so, as, I, as I've said, um, I think child marriage uh, can be conceptualized into a number of things, including sexual exploitation, because that is one of the things that, uh, that is a purpose of child marriage, and it is one of the exper uh, experiences that children undergo in child marriages. However, uh, if you are in a place where the legal framework is slightly problematic, then, uh, for example, Tanzania, and especially for the Tanzania framework, which is why I decided to go for uh, human uh, trafficking route, because in Tanzania, uh, marital rape, for example, uh, is not uh, outlawed. Uh, so uh, if uh, a girl child is over 15, they're not in the formal education system, uh, they get married and they get raped in their marriages, they cannot bring uh, uh, any case against that because it is legal. However, uh, when it comes to human trafficking, as I've said, we have fantastic human trafficking laws. We have very good laws on uh, child uh, child trafficking. So for the, for Tanzania in particular, uh, it is more favorable to go the tra child trafficking route because we have laws that can actually be enforced that can protect children that are also out of school. So this is why I decided to go the route of trafficking. Okay, that's uh, that's also very interesting. I mean, you know, strategies from a lawyer perspective, uh, I guess, 
what uh, what speaks better, what's already in the law, and how you use the law that uh, uh, that would work or, or doesn't work. And it's maybe also in relationship to you know social norms, what's recognized or more recognizable or not. Uh, so attention to context is always uh, is always very very important. And thanks for for your findings. Um, I'd like to ask a question that has been um, asked by a French speaker. Um, I know that some of them were um, embarrassed that uh, the, the the whole presentations are, are in English, but so let's let's include them in the, in the same way. So that's a um, a question by Fulgence, uh, who comes from Burundi and uh, where there is also a, a lot of child uh, child labor issues and. Uh, um, uh, uh, children from Tanzania who are actually leaving and go to, to Burundi. Uh, so the question is whether um, there is a possibility to facilitate access to justice for those children who are leaving Tanzania and coming to Burundi, and uh, whether it is possible to collaborate uh, towards uh, mitigating or at least eliminating those factors of human trafficking between the two countries. I hope that I got the question right. Uh, I have some questions in order to understand more. So there are children that are going to from Tanzania to Burundi uh, for child labor. And the question was whether there is a possibility. Uh, so whether there is a possibility to facilitate access to justice to the, for these children who are uh, leaving Tanzania to seek refuge, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, find themselves in Burundi, um, and is it possible to collaborate, I guess, between different institutional organizations between the two countries uh, in order to eliminate um, the, the factors of human trafficking? Uh, so uh, the, the laws that we have uh, in Tanzania, the human trafficking laws at the moment, uh, they talk about cross-border uh, human trafficking, and they also talk about collaboration that can be done uh, with institutions of the other uh, of the other country. And it is easier for Tanzania Burundi because we also have frameworks at the continental level, but also at the East African level, uh, which talk about trafficking in general. Uh, and uh, cross-border cooperation in response to uh, those aspects. So I think legally, uh, the frameworks are there to, uh, to facilitate uh, cross-border uh, cooperation in addressing issues of child labor, issues of human trafficking. However, now the matter of implementation is something else together, uh, all together, because then that, uh, that demands uh, programming at the local level, child protection programming uh, to specifically respond to the plight of uh, child labor. Uh, uh, so implementation of these laws is slightly a challenge. From my experience, it is shown that it is easier to respond to these issues in terms of, uh, especially for organizations that work on these issues, to respond in terms of uh, legal mechanisms, uh, legal measures, for example, taking cases to courts and everything. But ultimately, you realize that you get good decisions, you get good laws, but implementation on the ground is very small. So I would say participation of all stakeholders is quite important. So the governments in the first place have to be willing to cooperate and engage to make sure that they respond to these uh, matters jointly, but also the stakeholders that are addressing these matters, they have to uh, include the cross-border aspects in order to make sure that uh, they respond holistically to the issues that are being raised. I hope I've answered the question. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Isabella. And if I can summarize in French for Fulgence, uh, so basically the laws, uh, les lois en, en, en Tanzanie sont uh, à travers les, les frontières. Uh, donc elles vont considérer les mouvements d'enfants de, uh, d'un pays à l'autre. Uh, 
mais c'est extrêmement difficile de, de les implémenter. Euh, c'est toujours cette même problématique. Alors, ce que Isabelle a recommandé, c'est bien sûr qu'il y ait beaucoup plus de partenariats et de collaborations entre les parties impliquées, que ce soit les États, bien sûr, ou les parties prenantes des organisations qui travaillent pour la protection des enfants et tout ça. Mais ça reste quand même de l'ordre difficile à, à implémenter. Donc, c'est vraiment une petite synthèse. Mais les lois sont là, donc maintenant, il faut les activer entre les différents parties. J'espère que ça fait sens au moins à ce niveau-là. Um, donc, uh, that, so, so to, to maybe quickly conclude, if we could, uh, I think, yeah, well, I think we, we come to, to the 15 minutes uh, past three. Um, I would like to thank the, the panelists for those very rich contributions. And I really enjoyed that the, pan the panel went from the global uh, to then speaking to much more micro and then social issues that definitely confront and challenge uh, the, the legal uh, framework that exists. Um, and uh, I think this, the, the, the three uh, panelists were extremely complementary in, uh, in providing us with, uh, with those very rich perspectives. And um, well, thanks a lot again, Isabella and, uh, and Al-Hassan and then Naomi and, and Pamela who had to leave. <laughs>